I'm in partnership with Black Dog Hospitality and Simply Feed Me. And today I'm going to show you how to make schnitzel, potato salad, and cucumber salad. First off, what we're going to do is get our potato salad going. What you want to do is take a nice Yukon Gold or a russet potato, cut it maybe three or four times over this way, split it in half, two more times across on both sides, and then across the entire way like so. What you want to do is try and make pretty consistently even slices, so you make cubes like so. Add some salt, and what you're going to want to do is put cold water in on these. The reason you start any root vegetable with cold water is so it cooks evenly. If you were to put hot water in right off the bat, it's going to start cooking a little bit quicker around the edges and the insides aren't going to be as cooked as the outsides are. So, we'll leave that to the side. Once it comes up to a boil, just turn it down a little bit. You want to simmer in really lightly. While that's simmering, what you can start doing is getting our cucumber salad going. Get yourself a vegetable peeler and take all that green skin off of it. We don't need these skins for anything, so we can get rid of them. Next, what you want to do is take a mandolin. If you don't have a mandolin like this, uh, whether it's French or Japanese, what you can do is take a box grater. Most box graters that you can find in grocery stores have this option on one of the sides of them. What you want to do is just start going across lightly and carefully. If you're not careful, you're going to take off your fingertip right down as far as you can. So, what you can do with all these cucumber shavings you want to put them in a bowl like this, take some salt, lightly dust it, mix it all around so it's all over. <clears throat> salt extracts moisture and the whole point of doing this right off the bat and leaving it um, is so that it'll take out as much moisture from the cucumber as possible and then we're left with mostly just the flesh and a lot less water. You're going to notice a lot of water is going to come out of these cucumbers. What we can do next is start pairing out some meat uh, for the shepherds. The way to do it is to grab yourself a pork cutlet or a chicken breast. In this case, we're going to be doing pork. It's the exact same method whether you're using pork or chicken. Take a meat mallet. What you want to do is start, start pounding it out lightly. You don't want to pulverize it, so don't go too hard on it. Like so. You want a nice flat piece like that. Up next, what we're going to do is bread our pork cutlet. What we've got going on here is some seasoned flour. In this flour, there's some onion powder, some salt, a little bit of pepper. Uh, the most important thing is, is flour and salt. You don't have to go fancy with many other herbs or spices. It's a preference. If you have them kicking around, you might as well use them. But it's definitely not a necessity to have anything other than salt and flour. Then you're going to want to take about three or four eggs. Throw them in your bowl and beat them up like this. You just want to break them apart. You don't have to go too, too far with them. In our next bowl, we have some breadcrumbs. These are panko breadcrumbs, which is Japanese. And again, key, key part, put some salt in there, because salt equals flavor. Now we have our flour, we have our eggs, and we have our panko breadcrumbs. What you want to do is try and keep one hand wet and one hand dry. This, uh, this saves us from gooping up, so if we were putting the pork in here with both hands and then into the egg and then into the breadcrumbs, over time you're going to start goofing up your fingers and it just becomes a mess. It's not good for anybody. So, take this as our wet hand, put it in the flour, dry hand goes in, like so. You just want to coat it nicely into the egg, wet hand comes back in. want to get rid of any excess so you just kind of want to hold it up for a little bit and kind of not necessarily shake it but just let it do its thing get rid of any excess egg and then right into the breadcrumbs your dry hand comes back in like so and then what you can also do should this not be breaded enough for you you can take it from the dry put it right back into those eggs and you can double bread it you'll get a thicker crust if that's what you're looking for have at it Kind of want to press down on it to make sure it's covering all of the meat. I'll just set those aside and we'll get back to our potato salad. So at this point, our uh, potatoes are cooking. They're bubbling away, they're good and hot. Uh, when they're hot, strain them out. Lay them out flat as you can. You don't have to put them in the fridge, but you want them at room temperature just to cool down. 
So, cooked off potatoes, we're gonna take some, uh, some dill pickles, roughly chop them across like so. Be careful not to get your fingertips because it's potato salad, not potato and finger salad. Pop those pickles right on in there. We'll take some green onion. Just take off the little bulb end. Finally go across like so. The thinner the better. We'll pop that into our salad as well. Take some red onion. Now this may sound like a lot of onion, but as long as you're using small portions of each type of onion, they're gonna marry in the salad and it's gonna taste wonderful after. So, then we're gonna take a bit of dry dill wheat, which you can find at any grocery store as well. Sprinkle, you can eyeball it, let's say two tablespoons. Again, very important, salt. I can't stress enough how important it is to put salt to everything that you're cooking. You don't have to oversalt everything, but you definitely have to put salt into food. Everything, little bit by little bit, stages as you go. Don't salt at the end, don't just salt at the beginning. Salt as you go. For that, for this size of potato salad, I would say maybe that much mayonnaise, a bit of canola oil. You can use olive oil if you have it, vegetable oil, it doesn't matter start incorporating it like so. You don't want to mash your potatoes, you just kind of want to fold it in. Just be really gentle with it. Because if you're not gentle with it, you will end up with mashed potato salad. And you want a bit of texture. So the next stage, we're gonna use some white wine vinegar and add it in. Um, I prefer white wine vinegar myself. Uh, white vinegar on its own would work. If you have it, it works. Just a splash, you don't need too much, just over your spoon and incorporate again. Do not mash, just go nice and nice and light. So, our potato salad is generally finished. What we can do now is we'll just put it in the fridge and what I'm gonna show you next is how to do the cucumber salad. So, after you've salted your cucumbers over about 20 minutes to a half hour or so, you're gonna notice that they're gonna start extracting all that moisture that I was telling you about. What you're left with is simply just the flesh of the cucumber. And that's basically all you want to work with because you're going to be adding some more liquid into it. Carefully, you can use a colander, a strainer if you'd like. Just carefully get rid of all that extra liquid. Again, a bit more dill. Say maybe a tablespoon. Salt, believe it or not. More salt. So this is a very simple salad salt and dill and then after that what we want to add is maybe just shy of three tablespoons let's say two and a half tablespoons of canola oil like so so what we're gonna do now is just set this back in the fridge and we're gonna get cooking our schnitzels that have already been breaded because that's what we did right off the bat not most homes or houses will have a deep fryer like this Another option, and probably the option anyone at home is going to be using, is take a pan, get it nice and hot, preferably a, a Teflon pan so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Uh, what you want to do is get about a good, a good inch of, of canola oil on the bottom. You want it to just, just hot enough before it smokes. So what you can do to figure that state out is put your pan on, leave the burner on for a while, get it nice and hot and add your canola oil. If it starts smoking right away, turn it down a little bit. Once it stops smoking, it's ready to go. In this case, since we are in a kitchen, we have the deep fryer available. It's the exact same cooking method, it's just a different vessel for cooking. So the deep fryer is ready to go, our schnitzel's already breaded. I'll pop that in there like that. We can start plating. So what we're gonna do first, get our potato salad back out of the fridge. Good dollop, because you can't go too much on potato salad. Our schnitzel's cooking away, that's gonna be about another good minute or so. All right, so our schnitzel is nearly finished, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna take a lemon, cut it into some wedges, and set aside. So, Schnitzel is good and cooked now. What I'm going to do is 
leave it in that basket. What you can do at home is if you have a sheet pan or anything like that, you can just lay down some paper towel, put your schnitzels on it like that, and it gets rid of a bit of the oil. Anything that ever comes out of a deep fryer needs salt. Now you're gonna notice I'm, I'm salting it in very small portions, so I'm not over salting it as I go. Nothing worse than, worse than having over salted food, just little bits as you go. That can lay right down on your potato salad like so. And then we're gonna grab our cucumber salad out of the fridge. It's just a nice accompaniment on the side. Then just a little bit of lemon on the side like that. And that is our schnitzel potato salad and cucumber salad. You enjoy.